Greetings friends, my name is John Gabriel and this is the new Calculus channel. So today I'm going to be discussing a YouTube video, um, which is one in a series of many and it's called Calculus Done Right. Now, the irony is that it should be called Calculus Done Wrong, but I'm not going to harp on that. The video is supposedly about lengths and Jordan measure. And so... After <coughs> 49 sessions, this lecturer is defining length and area, etc. So he's already given the definition of his integral using bogus Riemann sums, etc. And now he's ready <coughs> to provide some deeper understanding. So um, he briefly mentions where he's heading to. In other words, he's going to focus on Jordan measure and then goes into a diversion about how the area is not defined in geometry because apparently tessellation is an iffy process. So first of all, what is Jordan measure? And if you look at math world, <laughs> this is the obfuscated definition of Jordan measure, okay? In other words, M is a number, right? That is the measure of a given body or area where the body or area consists of the ordered pairs x, y, such that x is in a, b, which are lengths, by the way. So length is, is suddenly automatically defined. And y is some number from 0 to f of x, which is the ordinate of a given uh, bounded non-negative function. So you've also got to know what a bounded non-negative function is. There is so much circularity here. And then obviously if f is Riemann integral, integrable, so this goes now into a, uh, a circular definition. Uh, f is Riemann integrable if m is Jordan measurable. <laughs> but if m is measurable, <laughs> Jordan has nothing to do with it, by the way, then uh, <clears throat> f is integrable and this integral is defined. Uh, by the way, all that this means here is a product of two arithmetic means. <coughs> I've been over that many times, so I'm not going to spend more time on it. But in any case, so uh, then a student interjects during the video incredulously and is informed there is an entire shitload uh, theory of measure or theory on measure as if this somehow gives it credibility and support and he's asked to do a little assignment or read up on it in any case at approximately three minutes <clears throat> he presents some bodies which he hasn't actually defined i think what he means are geometric objects from which he will demonstrate the supposed inadequacies of length area etc he falsely claims that in classical geometry this is done by tessellation okay so over here, he says, oh, yeah, we cut off this part and we move it along to this part. <clears throat> in fact, there is a definition of area in Euclid's elements, even though it is not called as such. It's called a plane number. There is even a definition of volume, and it's called the solid number. <coughs> so the definition of plane number <coughs> is a product of two arithmetic means. And I was the first to realize that, by the way. No one in the history of humans was smart enough to realize that. So this is why, obviously, such junk theory has pr proliferated. But uh, then he begins to talk about intuition. And he says, in classical geometry, use intuition. That's absolute garbage because tessellation is based on the idea of plain number. So... Uh, it's perfectly valid proof if you can demonstrate that this area here can be moved to complete the plane number. <coughs> because a rectangle area is the product of two arithmetic means. So he then ridicules geometric proofs, fails to realize that the tethel, and I've already mentioned that. So the irony is that he then introduces the notion of beliefs or axioms at 420, which is fine in set theory, but now somehow invalid in geometry. Of course, there, there are no beliefs or axioms in geometry, and a plane number is very well defined. 
This means that any area without exception takes the form of a plane number. Okay, so a circular area, an irregular area, it doesn't matter if it's a surface area, is really very easy. It's given by this formula. An area of any geometric object, okay, is its base times its height. Now, <clears throat> uh, not every geometric object has a base and a height, which means you have to normalize it into a rectangle okay or a square meaning that you have to rectangulate uh, another word for this is quadrature okay you have to perform a quadrature that's what you do when you use an integral uh, natural integration is just basically <coughs> summing up the y-ordinates in an irregular part under a curve and between two limits taking their mean and multiplying it by the interval width, which also happens to be an arithmetic mean. I've explained all this in other videos and how it is possible to do that uh, and how it is possible for that seemingly infinite process to be done in a finite way. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm having difficulty breathing. So that makes far more sense than <laughs> body into a function area returning the measure of a body which is just garbage at the end of the day this poor ignoramus doesn't realize that he has come full circle and that ultimately the measure has to be a plain number okay it has to be a plain number so somehow circularity and obfuscation makes it more palatable okay so in 430 he claims that in modern mathematics we define everything in terms of sets and at this point, he develops a distaste for intuition. <clears throat> so at 5.15, he says, a circle is no longer a symmetrical path, meaning the same distance to a given center, but a set of ordered pairs. And, and he, he, he really gets uh, pretty confused here because he, he talks about this part of the circle, the inside of the circle, as being the circle, but it's not a circle. He, he, he doesn't, he appears not to even understand the distinct difference between the circle and the concept of area between the circular path. So if you listen to his video, he, he'll say that this here is what defines a circle. It isn't. <clears throat> but I'm going to give him a bit of leeway and forgive him at this point and say that the ordered pairs represent uh, points on the path of the circle. The, 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 in other words, on the circumference. But even so, <clears throat> okay, even so, um, there is a problem here, and I'll get to it in a second. The problem is this, that the ordered paths are like road signs along the circular path. They're not part of the circle. And, and first of all, to get those ordered pairs, you already have to assume a lot of theory. For example, you've already assumed that everything has been established in terms of number, in terms of straight line, in terms of extended line. In fact, even in terms of circle, which is requirement three. So he uses the area to perform a measure of the circle. Now, a circle has nothing to do with area. It is well defined as a symmetrical distance. And you may say, well, wait a minute, what is symmetry? Well, symmetry is simp simply means the same measure, but it does not care about the actual measure, okay? And loosely symmetry as defined in the first three requirements, means the same thing. It doesn't mean an actual measure, so it's got nothing to do with numbers. So, for example, if you have a circle and you take a diameter and you move along the path from one side of the diameter to the, to the other and you do it on the other side too, those paths are of equal length. They have to be because, guess what? A circle is defined as that distance from which, or is that path, from which any distance to a given center is the same straight line, okay? Now, if you go back and look at my previous video on the bogus uh, axioms and the belief that there are axioms in Greek mathematics, you'll see that you don't need axioms at all, <clears throat> all right? So, um, uh, then, then finally, he uses plane in his set, theoretic definition. So he, he says, uh, we view a figure as a plane, but guess what? 
to get plain, you already need the first three requirements. Okay. There is so much irony in this video. I could write an entire book on the errors in this poor lecturer's video, but this is what poor students who are studying mathematics have to deal with this absolute garbage which they never understand. And of course, if you have a psychophant student like the one who interjects right at the beginning and says all incredulously, wow, now, you know, that's a different story because psychophants aren't really <coughs> in the business of learning and understanding. They're in the business of obtaining high marks, uh, graduating, you know, with the greatest honors they can get and appearing to be the erudite of the academia or, or of all the academic professions. So <clears throat> psychophants learn how to use methods. They don't understand them. And of course, no lecturer, no mathematician, no human before me has actually understood the concept of area, nor of volume. Okay. And they've not even understood the concept of arithmetic mean properly. And that without an arithmetic mean, you don't have a definite integral. You don't have calculus. You don't have plain number because a plain number is the product of two arithmetic means. Okay. So now I'm incredibly tired <coughs> and I'll have to stop here. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And one final note is that I'm doing this not for myself, but for the future. Those aspiring young mathematicians, those who want well-formed mathematics, not garbage, like they learn in mainstream mathematics academia. <coughs> and I believe I have a wheeze again. Hmm. Well, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been coughing throughout this video. Well, try to stay safe and we'll talk again soon. I'm John Gabriel and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time. Goodbye.